Hi guys, it's me, the Everyday Acrorist, and in this video, we're going to be learning about macroalgae and what's the best macroalgae for your refugium. Watch to the end of the video to find out my favourite macroalgae for refugiums. So I was just hanging out in my shed, admiring my macroalgae, and it occurred to me to make a video about what is the best refugium macroalgae. I have got absolutely tons of macroalgae of all different species. Now there are a few different methods of refugiums. There's a few different schools of thought about what a refugium should be. Firstly I'll outline it by saying a refugium is essentially a tank below your main display. It's normally your sump area and in that area you grow macroalgae. Macroalgae as well as looking really cool also has the added benefit of removing nitrates and phosphates from water and that's the same as a plant does in its soil and in the aquarium this is excellent because it will help to keep your nitrates and phosphates down in your fish tanks and for people who have reef tanks with corals a refugium is a really beneficial thing to have because you can use it to suck out all of the nasties from the water without having to use chemical filtration like nitrate and phosphate absorbers so out of all of these macroalgae that I have, what are actually the best ones for a refugium? Now I'm going to go on the basis that in most people's refugiums they're doing it because they want the benefit of the lowered nitrates and phosphates. So I'm going to avoid the macroalgae that are typically grown for their looks because these don't generally have the best growth rates and they don't generally suck out as many nitrates and phosphates as you would probably require. So the macroalgae I'm going to show you are ones which really grow fast and really suck out those nitrates and phosphates and they help to create that really excellent water quality which is the whole reason for the refugium in the first place. I'll just preface this before I get into my top three macroalgae for refugiums that it's in no particular order. I'm not saying one is totally superior over the other. They all kind of have their own merits. All of the three that I'm going to talk you through are viable options for your refugium. So the most popular refugium macroalgae, and I say popular not in that it's the best, but it's just sort of the most popular because everyone just assumes that's the one that you should use, is Cheeto. Now Cheeto is incredibly easy to grow and why am I showing you half of a field and half of a fish tank? And the reason is I can barely squeeze in here and film this. But I have Cheeto growing in the end of this tank here and it's not under any light, it's actually getting the light from outside through the window. Now let me just open this up and I'll get some Cheeto out and we'll have a little look at, uh, you can actually see all the copepods pods and things moving around as I get this Cheeto out. So there's an example of the refugium doing the right job. So Cheeto is a really wiry algae. It uh, kind of grows in a ball, quite a dense mat, and you can see when it's happy it's a really deep green colour. Now bear in mind, this is just growing from sunlight and the water flowing through it. I'm not adding anything particularly special to grow this, um, and obviously it likes sunlight more than anything because it's a beautiful colour. Now why do people use Cheeto? People use Cheeto because it's readily available, it's fairly easy to control, it grows quite quickly, and it is a huge user of nitrates and phosphates. So I have this cool box here that I use to take pictures of macroalgae under. We'll just have a little look a bit more at the structure of Cheeto. Now you can see it's long strands of highly filamentous algae. And it's well suited to refugium to be honest because you can just dump in a strand or two and it will just keep growing and growing and growing. So Cheeto actually makes a really good macroalgae for a refugium for a number of reasons. It sucks in the nitrates quite quickly. It's uh, easy to obtain. I mean anybody can get hold of this. It's sold at most shops and it's even traded quite readily between people. It also doesn't really require a lot of care you can just chuck this into most uh, sump areas with a small light over the top of it it doesn't even have to be a very good light and cheeto will grow quite easily and quite well if you look on top of this mess of a power head you will see a green lettuce like macroalgae growing and that macroalgae is called ulva now ulva as a macroalgae grows pretty much in all the oceans of the world 
Um, it's quite tolerant of different fluctuations of water quality. It's quite tolerant of different temperatures. It's quite it can grow it can grow in a fairly low temperature and fairly high temperatures. So as a macroalgae in general, it's quite undemanding. But the good thing about Ulva is it grows very, very fast. As you can see in this tank, it's kind of growing everywhere, even on the rockwork. And because it's so fast growing, it makes it an excellent algae for a refugium. So we'll just get some Ulva out here. There's, uh, I've got it growing everywhere. So this is Ulva. It's a really fine sheet of green macroalgae. It's actually edible. I haven't tried it myself, but it's highly regarded as quite a nutritious food. So this is Ulva in all of its glory. Now it's really quite easy to break Ulva. It's quite a delicate algae, but when it's in your aquarium, it can grow into massive sheets and can grow in areas of high or low flow. It's not very fussy to be honest, but does prefer slightly brighter lighting than Cheeto does. Ulva can grow on pretty much any surface and it's very loosely attached to the surface that it grows on. And by that I mean it can be pulled off quite easily. So if it grows somewhere you don't particularly want it, it's quite easy to remove. So it makes it quite easy to handle. Although going a little bit deeper into that, I would suggest if you're running Ulva on your refugium to have a UV light running on your system because Ulva spreads by sporulation. And as you can see in my tanks, it kind of grows everywhere it can when it spores. So if you run a UV, you'll kind of limit its spread to your main display tank. Or if you've got tangs in your main display tank, they'll actually keep it under control anyway. The main reason why I think it's better than Cheeto is just because uh, pound for pound, the Ulva is going to be removing more nitrates and phosphates and waste from your aquarium than the Cheeto is. And also I prefer Ulva because it's easier to handle in terms of light reactors. So the new kid on the scene for refugiums um, or growing macroalgae anyway certainly are these light tubes where you put your macroalgae in and then these things run 24-7. Ulva tends to do better in these than Cheeto. Also if you look at the structure of Cheeto and then you look at the structure of Ulva, Ulva doesn't tend to get clogged up with detritus. Whereas Cheeto, once it gets quite condensed, it can get clogged up with dirt and all sorts. And in these reactor systems, it can actually cause flow issues. Whereas the Ulva, the way it grows in the sheets, it allows the water to uh, flow within it. So it's better in that way. This would not be a macroalgae refugium list without mentioning Calerpa. There are lots of different types of Calerpa. The one you see before you here is commonly misidentified as Calerpa racemosa, but it's not. This one is Calerpa lentilifera. This one here is Calerpa racemosa. But neither of these are really my top choice for refugiums, although Calerpa lentilifera is actually one of my favorites. I'd probably put this as fourth on the list. I'm not going to be discussing lentilifera in this video. I'm going to be discussing another one called Calerpa prolifera. Calerpa prolifera I have an obsession about in terms of adding it to macroalgae tanks because it is in my eyes the perfect macroalgae. It's not invasive, it's fast growing, it's pretty and it's just generally a great thing to have in any aquarium. But what makes it suited to a refugium. Well I'm going to kind of contradict myself a little bit on this one because I don't think that Calerpa prolifera has the fastest nutrient uptake or in fact can outcompete Cheeto or even outcompete Ulva in nutrient uptake but it has its merits in its own way. I'd probably go to say that in fact Calerpa lentilifera or Calerpa racemosa will actually outcompete Calerpa prolifera in nutrient export. So what makes Calerpa prolifera a good option for your refugium as opposed to just using Ulva or Cheeto or something else? Well I prefer to use prolifera because it creates more of an ecosystem than the other two. Although you'll get a healthy amount of pods and other things growing amongst the Cheeto and the Ulva, I've found that you tend to get a bigger biodiversity when you use beds of Calerpa. But why use Calerpa prolifera if Lentilifera and Racemosa grow faster. Well, I found that Prolifera is a more stable 
algae. The other two can actually melt a lot quicker and this is called going sexual. And it's one of the big fears amongst people who grow Calerpa is that they'll just melt overnight. Calerpa prolifera doesn't really have a tendency to go sexual as easily as the other two. But at the end of the day, there isn't any real right answer to this question. I'm just giving you three examples of macroalgae that you can use in your refugium. Any of these three will do a good job. They'll grow quite quickly. They will give you a nice enhanced environment in your refugium. They will also export a substantial amount of nitrates and phosphates. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're wondering what this blue barrel is, this is actually how I do my water changes in here is 220 litres of salt water, but that's something I'm gonna be doing after this video. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of this kind of content. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.